Hi, I'm David Castillo. This is my third video. As you can see, I'm already working on my tech, well, my second session. Uh, you can see first there's very little black work done and mainly just outline of uh, some black and some gray wash. I'm jumping in with some black, it looks like, just kind of filling in some of the deeper values. Uh, this whole piece is black and gray. Um, at the end of video two, you'll see a healed picture, which will sort of match the little bit that you see healed up top right there, actually, on the on the right of the tattoo, the front of the locomotive. What I'm probably using right now is a 13 on my stigma, just to sort of get this done fairly quickly. You can see uh, where I'm shading in now. It's not going to be solid because I put little lines in there just to kind of show where a little bit of the value was. Maybe some very little parts on the locomotive itself. All the black work's pretty basic, you know. Filling in here or there, wherever I see it needs to be kind of deep. Not really too much to it. It's like anything else, just getting it in there before it, uh, before the skin becomes, uh, overworked. And throughout this piece, I'm pretty much trying to keep the, the same light source to where, uh, you know, the, the bottom's a little bit deeper. And, uh, the top's a little bit, you know, a little bit lighter value, so that way it has the depth and the separation of tones that we're looking for in this so again this is all pretty basic stuff I think right now I'm using like an eternal triple black I think all the gray wash I'm going to use is uh, from silverback mainly just a normal gray wash I think I'm going to use a little bit of mold um, and some of the glass at the top up there. Um, I think that's pretty much the only place is just in the the glass up there is the only place I use the mold. I think everything else is black or gray wash. Uh, you'll be able to see at the end. I'm using a pretty deep mold. I think I use like a number three in the glass up there so it's still pretty deep but uh, it's a little bit of a difference. You know it's the, all the little things that, that count. I believe in the beginning of this video I didn't really have a clip cord cover on. Um, I wasn't working over it. You could see it starts to get a little bit sloppy. I think I'm pretty much, I think I'm going to throw on pretty soon because my clip cord might start going over this person's chest and I don't want to uh, contaminate my clip cord or more importantly my customer skin. Um, see, so you can see I have one on. I don't think I had one on before then because I you know, up to that point, I don't think it was very necessary. Always a good idea to throw it on first, but, you know, kind of like out of sight, out of mind, you know, it wasn't really touching, so, uh, you know, probably a little mistake on my part, but, you know, once it came to actually needing to contact, then I had to throw a cover over my clipboard, so that way, just like I said, so it wouldn't contaminate it. Okay, you can see here I'm just going over kind of the top and some of the deeper areas. Still working with the black. Uh, most pieces I kind of do piece by piece. This one, not so much. I don't like to contaminate my gray washes too much. Uh, muddy them up with black or too much blood to water them down. So on and so forth. Uh, so I like to keep, for the most part, my black and gray a little bit more pure so to say. Uh, so I like to kind of just piece it together like this, um, if at all possible. So that way my my values are still true. Um, a little bit more consistent. 
you know if you're you don't dry out the tube after every rinse you know you're gonna keep putting a little bit of a uh, distilled water into your gray wash and just diluting it a little bit more every time maybe a little bit more blood you know whatever it is so in this specific situation and my black and gray I prefer to stay you know a little bit more pure uh, in my ink caps and just kind of do it little by little sort of like cap by cap if that makes sense um, rather than area by area like I might do in some of my color pieces and black and gray, you know, it comes out a little bit faster anyway, so, you know, you don't have to worry about so much of the tenderness, especially if you're using a needle big enough for the size and you're not going to try to crank out a piece like this with maybe like a a 7 or something, you know. So again, I'm just putting in black. It's pretty exciting. You can see a lot of this I lined in a gray wash. Some of it I'll bring out a little bit more, and some of it I probably won't uh, because I want it to be, you know, a little bit more loose. We were thinking about a background on this. We didn't end up throwing one on on the second session. Uh, possibly we might go in a third. You know, it's all up to the customer. Uh, he might decide it's happy the way it is, and he might not. Uh, we were thinking almost a, a silhouette of a forest kind of look like... Um, but we we didn't really get there, like I said, so you know, we'll see how it goes. Just a little bit something off the top to kind of even out some of the loose ends. Make it more of a, you know, chess piece. You know, but for now, I think, you know, you'll see at the end, it, it looks fine. Uh, could use a little bit more, but it looks good. I was pretty happy with it. My customer was happy with it, so... Lots of black to go. You know, and uh, you know, I never really paid attention. Um, I might have had this clipboard cover on since the beginning of the tattoo. I never really paid attention to the video much, so um, my memory might have been a little bit shoddy on that. But either way, uh, you know, it's on after I start reaching over, so that's what counts. Because, like I said, I mean, the outline is already healed up, so. Clip cords can always be washed. Just throwing in more black. Now, for anyone that ever thought of trying the stigma, it's pretty awesome. Mine's actually, it's a little bit broken right now, but it's still a pretty amazing machine. I'm deciding to do it for repair. Unfortunately, the people were out at a convention, uh, so um, probably tomorrow I should be able to finally contact the company to send it in for repair that I got it from so if only machines never failed that'd be awesome but I mean overall it's a really amazing machine like I've said if you've seen any of my other videos I really prefer rotary over any of my other tattoo machines because uh, actually I sold a lot of my other tattoo machines because you don't have to worry about ca carbon buildup on a clip cord or, you know, on a contact screw, or front spring, any of that. Um, you know, they always run great and, uh, you know, the follow through is always perfect. It's always uh, right at zero, right where you need it. Uh, you know, there's no hesitations in the throw. So they're, my opinion, my opinion, they're awesome, so... If you haven't used them, I definitely recommend give it a try. Uh, and you got to keep in mind, uh, you know, a cheeseburger from McDonald's and a cheeseburger from In-N-Out or the local hamburger place, uh, you know, you can't expect it to really be the same quality, so. And those are like, what, a dollar, five dollars? So you definitely can't expect to get the same quality from a $40 machine to a $700 machine, for instance. So just because you tried a rotary doesn't mean you tried a worthwhile rotary. And the same goes for a coil, you know, you can't get a $20 machine and expect it to run like, let's say, uh, one that I've used in next gen, you know. Uh, you can't expect a next generation to run like a $20 machine, it's not going to. Next generation is obviously going to be far superior, just like a worthy 
rotary machine is going to be far superior. So you can see I'm, it looks like I'm going into finally like a number four gray wash. Uh, I know it looks pretty deep. Uh, you can see I'm fading it out a little bit though, so that way it's going to go smoothly into the next tone. Um, so you just sort of work it out. Same way, you know, if you don't have too much experience, I don't know, you know, who you are watching it. So, uh, kind of same way you might fade out a, a pencil or a pen, maybe. Uh, you know, whatever you use, colored pencil. Sort of a little bit of the same kind of uh, swoop there is, if you say, uh, you know, this little bit different. Usually I try to go with a, try to saturate each inch of skin with the same amount of uh, strokes, circles, back and forth motion, whatever you're doing, you know. Um, so a little bit less out, so it comes out a little bit lighter, but still smooth, so, you know takes a little bit of practice and just work back over that with the next tone so that way in the end you end up with something that's smooth and again it takes a little bit of practice probably to do that without tearing up the skin too much but it'll come in time so again I'm just adding in some darker value in the Just having fun with it. I think in this one, uh, I think I was actually having a pretty long day in this tattoo, so this is actually a little bit of a distraction or relief, I guess you could say. So, you know, I was really, really having a good time with this one. Um, you know, I, I always like doing stuff that's a little bit different, you know. I'm sure plenty of artists out there understand that, you know, you don't want the same thing coming in every day to where you don't really feel challenged or, you know, I'm sure sometimes you get people coming in here wanting or into your job or wherever, asking for some letters sometimes, asking if you could do it. It's like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. So it's always fun doing stuff like this where people actually trust you with something that, you know, could possibly be taken as, you know, a little bit of skepticism on their part, you know. And it's always a little bit discouraging when you're tattooing on someone that doesn't trust you to put a dot, you know, so it's, you know, it's always fun doing stuff like this. And I know there's lots of artists out there that don't really have that problem. But at the same time, I know there's a lot of us that do, so. You know, I always enjoy projects like this. Uh, like, again, the Jesus tattoo that I have um, as a video. really enjoyed that piece as well. It really let me kind of branch out from the norm. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm still just adding in a deep, deep gray wash. You can see I'm not really putting it in too solid. I know in the video you could probably barely see it, but hopefully you can see it a little bit that there's still kind of hollow points where I want there to be almost some roundness, some depth to it. So that way it doesn't look so flat. You know, some of it looks a little bit uh, shaded from the side. Um, and upward as well, mainly, uh, you know, above and below the glass, so that way it has a sort of like a roundness both ways. Working on a, looks like a tank down here. Again, a lot of fun, you know, you could put a little bit of depth into the, to this, so. This whole verse, first video is, you know, there's not too much detail, and it's kind of basic stuff. Uh, second video, you'll get to see some of the more uh, intricate details which are pretty exciting and definitely probably worth a view um, if you're hoping to improve your gray wash <laughs> 